right off the top, I have to say I'm disappointed. And why? The I'm, Same here. Uh, the reason why I'm disappointed is where's the glitter? I was expecting you to throw glitter at me or something. And I, yeah. I don't have any, what's going on? Where's the glitter? We've been told, we've been banned from venues. There's literally a sign at the Bovine Sex Club that says no confetti or glitter on this stage. And that is because of us. So we're trying to be more likable, to be honest. You're not on that stage. You're with <laughs> me here. I want the glitter. Are you serious? Oh my God. You know, When we opened for Bon Jovi, I handed him a package and there was <laughs> glitter in it. And he literally stepped away and was like, please stop. Like, no. <laughs> he was like, and it's true. Glitter is glitter is the, you know, STD of craft supplies. And we understand that. But we did ask if we could bring one of these to our show at Lemon. And we were told no. We were told no. Wow. So, you know, if you could put in a word. Put for in a us. word. Oh, my God. Let us shoot this thing off. Oh, my giant. God. Giant. Oh, uh, it's not giant. Look at how small it is. It's like we'll sweep it. I'll bring a broom. I'll bring I a broom. wish I could, but I am <laughs> not going to take that chance. I like being the host. Uh, of the lemon stage at the Elmo Combo. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. How does it feel though that you guys are going to be part of this? You know, it's going to be so exciting. So you might not know this, but we should tell them our history with the Elmo. Sure. So our for we've been a band for 11 years now and mm -hmm. our first ever album release party for our first album was at the Elmo. So like this is so meaningful to us that this is our first show since 2020 is going to be back there. This is great. I love it. What, what, right, off, right off the top, what is the show going to be like? Dave, what's it going to be like? There will not be. There <laughs> yeah, will no, not be a confetti cannon. No confetti. But mm -hmm. you will see. A, you will see a live, a human confetti cannon. <laughs> that's what. That's how you're describing our band now. Our band. Is our a, band is a human <laughs> confetti cannon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not, where do that. you guys? Where do you guys get this great? positive energy from oh. especially since the energy has been rough for the last two two and a half years and as we speak kind of like in a six uh you no, know stage don't here. say it don't say it i have to say because it's true we know yeah. it is and you know yeah i mean we're we're hoping it does it, it the the crest of the wave <laughs> is now is after Yes. Uh, April 12th, but I mean, hopefully, yeah. You whatever. know what? Honestly, Jupiter and Neptune are conjuncting <laughs> in the sky on April 12th, and it is supposed to be a very, very lucky planetary conjunction. And I'm just like, wow, hello. You know it's what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what you're saying. I know what you're does, saying. Does that and answer your question? <laughs> it actually does, because it goes right back to what I was saying. It's all about the positive vibes with you guys. Yes. How did you guys get together? Because you guys were in another band before, or what? how did that all work out? Oh, I love the look on her face on that. It's almost like, should I answer this? I was like, where did you find that out? Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so you, you can. You no, can I've ahead. been talking a lot. You say this one. Well, yeah, well, what's the what's the short the short version? The brief. Yes, we were in a band called The Big Deal, <laughs> um, and Vanessa was the singer, and I was the drummer found on craigslist and he got and kicked out that, of the band and i got kicked out of the band for not being the greatest drummer. i was a very creative drummer you but i was not drummer. really great at keeping time that's not true it is true I... that's not necessarily the reason whatever the band broke up um mm. and then vanessa and i wanted to start a new band because we became best buds and uh and creative partners and so creative life partners we should we... say that is that a thing we're creative life partners that sounds it is so now. right i love it and so we wanted to see if we could write songs together, and then we did. Uh, and then he, and then 10, 11 years later, here we are somehow still. We're here. We haven't killed each other yet. We're not oh dead yet, as our song says. God, I, I, you guys remind me of Sonny and Cher when I used to watch as a kid. <gasps> oh, <laughs> man. Like, seriously, I love that. Seriously, somebody needs to give you guys a sitcom or a show. Because oh I swear God. I feel really like I'm watching to... one. <laughs> oh my God. You cannot throw your voice out before the show. I'm so sorry. That is literally the biggest compliment of our lives. I low-key think we should just be a comedy duo. Does David agree? No. But you have just, you've known us for like five minutes and he already sees our talent. If you could read my mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, we're gonna I'll actually get into that because did you guys do a Gordon? Did you do a Gordon Lightfoot cover or something? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we did. 
It was a Christmas song. Well, it's a winter song. Yeah, winter song. It's a winter song. I'm obsessed with Christmas. Um, David is not, but I wanted to do a Christmas song forever. So we finally compromised and did Song for a Winter's Night, which is like the best winter cozy up love song ever. Originally by Gordon Lightfoot, covered by Sarah McLaughlin. Low key, that's like my favorite version. And so we covered it. I'm just curious. Has has either one of them heard your version? Did they they say anything (laughs) to you guys about it? Actually, yeah. Oh my God, Rudy. So I am, okay. So first of all, yes, Gordon Lightfoot actually has, and his secretary called us because he's like old school. First of all, we had to mail him a CD. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but we had to mail him one. (laughs) And then he listened to it and his secretary called to tell us that Gordon said, keep up the good work. He loves the version. Like it was so sweet. It was so sweet. Sarah, Sarah, on the other other hand. hand. Sarah, if you are watching this, we've been trying to find you for three years. Honestly, you don't know our missions to find Sarah. In fact, let me just... Our missions are... The quickest story, I was even at, um, what's that restaurant in Yorkville, the vegan restaurant? We all know what it is. Planta. I was at Planta. Okay. Okay. This is after many attempts of like mailing her CDs, trying to find her. I'm at Planta. Sarah fucking McLaughlin walks in. She walks into Planta with like a crew of people, (laughs) sits at the table next to me, and I'm like... Oh my God, Sarah McLaughlin is here. I've been trying for years to get her to listen to my song. I give the waiter a note and I'm like, can you give this to Sarah? The note just says like, Sarah, you know, I'm a huge fan, whatever. We covered your song. This is our band name. The waiter promises they'll give her the note. We left. Who was, knows? Was the note given to her? Because if it was, I mean, maybe she knows, maybe she's heard it, but I was also like, but wouldn't Sarah contact me? She's very busy. I know. You know what I love the fact? Would you when you were talking, you sat back. It's almost like you know when to go into let me just chill mode. You just gotta like, you gotta give Vanessa some room. She needs <laughs> she just needs some room to really be, be to fully so yeah, yes. <laughs> what 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 do you think it is the magic between the two of you? I mean, musically when what I've seen from the new single that we're gonna talk about in video, um your voices are just like perfect together and the energy and everything else too but i just mean even off you know stage and whatever what is the magic between the two of you david what is the magic <laughs> uh we're we're don't best, be shy we're best friends <laughs> we have been i mean I, I don't yeah we don't we have been through a lot we've over our years um we've been there's been some uh, some highs and lows and We've made it through them all, and we we are best friends. So I mean, that's why we get along so well. But then also, we love making music, and and our band has been our biggest dream for many many years. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, so like you said, how do we keep our positivity? Um, I don't know. The band is like our one of our main expressions of our hopefulness as people, and so we try to channel that into the music that we create and into the the show that we perform. How did I do? I thought it was so good. I want to cry, but I won't because you know, like <laughs> makeup. But that's really sweet, and I agree. And I think also when you work, like for us, it really is a life dream like it is like what we have sacrificed a lot collectively together individually for this and I think when you do that with someone else you can't help but build um that bond because it's something that you know most of my friends and like family don't do or don't really understand yes they support me but like they're not on this crazy mission of like sacrifice literally everything else for a career that likely won't even happen (laughs) you know like that's a big thing to do with someone so I think that's that's another part of it Do, do you guys finish each other's sentences Yes, all the time. I'd say, well, I'd say you finish my sentences. <laughs> I don't know if it goes both, if it goes the other way, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he is a Taurus and I'm a Gemini, in case you're wondering. Her Whoa! Brother. Are I you serious? <laughs> and it works? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Oh my no! I'm serious. They they don't usually work well together. It's like a war usually. 
Well, oh, I guess really... that maybe explains a lot. We do fight a lot. Like we got in five fights today, all band related. Like we, we fight all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just usually not filmed, but sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Well, 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 hopefully it's not going to happen while we're filming this, but you did mention the words Bon Jovi. We should explain to the audience why and how this glitter almost attacked yeah. him and whatever else. <laughs> what was going on with you guys and Bon Jovi? Because this was a very cool thing that happened for you guys. So it was CMW 2018. We had just mm. played what was the biggest show of our lives then. Well, one of the biggest. One of the biggest. It was. We'd open for Matt and Kim at the Phoenix. We were on a high. We open it. We go to sleep that night. We go to a coffee shop the morning after. And we're all groggy. And David's phone rings. Now, David never has his fucking ringer on. It is one of the most annoying things about him. So we don't hear the call. There's just a voicemail. And Dave, I'm in line trying to get coffee. And he's on the phone like, and I'm like, what? And he's like, it's 102 The Edge, and they're saying we were shortlisted to open for Bon Jovi this weekend. I literally lose my mind. I'm in the coffee shop yelling at the top of my lungs at 8 in the morning, everyone, we're in a band and we might open for Bon Jovi. People weren't as annoyed as you might think, to be honest. Like, people were like, oh, okay, like, whatever. Anyways. What had happened is Bon Jovi, being the dear man that he is, on his tours, he always finds a local band to open yes. for him to give, yeah, to give them the break he got when he was younger. Because, like, he doesn't need an opener to, like, sell tickets. And we're, like, the stars aligned. We were chosen at 4 o'clock that afternoon. We got the call saying we were chosen. And we had three days to prepare. Like, they were like, in three days you're playing the ACC. And it was, it was the highlight of our lives. Wait, what year was this? 2018. Did I go to that show? I think oh I was God, at that show. Did. Well, you if you had come to see the opener... I always yeah, come in the beginning. I always come yeah, you early. Would, you would. I mm. always come... Now, I really got to wreck my brain on this there one. There was a guitar. Like, I feel like you'd remember. I... Because like, I, I know where... I, no, because I've gone to several Bon Jovi shows. I know where exactly mm. where I'm usually sitting. So I got mm. a feeling I saw you guys perform. That would be crazy. I got to really lock my brain on this. But it was what May was, 11th. Look in your calendar. I'm going to go back and look it. on it. But okay. what was the experience like for you guys to play okay, the ACC, go. which of course <laughs> is now Scotiabank? What was yes. it like for you guys? Well, yeah, we are we are not affiliated with any particular brand. Uh, we are, <laughs> but we will take sponsors. Yeah, I mean we're open to it. We'll take any for the right price. Um, it was, uh, it was a dream come true. It's like it a still is a it's it still is a life highlight, mm -hmm. and forever will be. And it still is a, a huge moment of like validation and joy for for our, our band's career because. Yeah, I mean, when we were there, like we were sound checking and just looking out and like looking out into yeah. the, the the stands and thinking, like looking at the section where I had watched Pearl Jam from over there and I had seen yeah. Guns N' Roses when I was sitting over there and like each, thinking how many times I'd been to that venue or a venue that size and you're like watching a band you love on stage and thinking like how much fun must they be having i'm getting like full body goosebumps and how amazing it must feel to like play on a stage like that and so to actually have that opportunity was incredible and yeah we'll never forget the feeling of it and also the generosity the like oh we want to be famous so we can do that for musicians like i i just yeah. i think there was that part of it of being like wow like that's so cool I mean, obviously we can all do kind things in our day-to-day -day lives, but you know, with more clout and more, you know, resources, you can do more things for more people. And I just think it's such a cool thing of him to do and to be like, we were granted that gift from him. Um, and we hope to return the favor one day too. And, but he did avoid you after the glitter. Yes. Or no? He did. He, so first of all, he came and gave us a full pep talk before the show. Like right. how nice is that? He was like, don't be nervous. Like da, 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 whatever. And then I went to present him with the package and he did step backwards away from me and but was it like, was was it because you were covered i in was glitter? covered in glitter that's why or i was there covered glitter in, glitter. in the package there was both both things are true two things are right true. okay <laughs> but yes he was not he wasn't visibly upset no when we were in person with him so upset. hopefully and i mean for all we know hopefully maybe we don't he have, like do you think we have beef with bon jovi i don't think so uh, no i don't know if i don't know if our good friend john has beef with anyone i don't know if he's <laughs> if he beefs <laughs> No, and if he did, he would have written a song about it too already by now. Oh so. my God, my yeah. house is not for sale. There is that you about go. Us? 
Yeah, maybe. He wrote it before we, he met us, but... Uh, <laughs> so you're good, you're be. good. But you guys are writing music. I just saw the music video that you guys have posted, and I think it's amazing. The color contrast, the energy, everything else, too. For folks who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you explain <laughs> what is the new single called and what's it about? Well, so it's called One Pill, and actually it's a really special one because we actually wrote it forever ago, like six years ago, maybe we were in a jam with like our original band and we wrote it in a jam session and we just recorded it and we could never like really see it anywhere. It didn't really have a chorus. And David was always like, one day we're going to record this song. And I was like, okay, like whatever, who cares? Like, but at the beginning of right before the pandemic started, I guess, like January, 2020 or something, we were writing our new album and we revisited this one and we just like it just took off it was just the right time and it's really you know it's it's one of those moments where stars align again like it's it's about it's called one pill and it's just about how we're all just trying to numb out on our, in our own ways you know like to sometimes the weight of the world is too much like it might be alcohol it might be binging netflix it might be like I don't know, eating a lot of ice cream, those lyrics aren't in there, but that's, <laughs> that's the vibe. That's yeah, the vibe. ways we disconnect, disconnect without yeah. even realizing. Yeah. Like, kind of a reflection on different forms of addiction yeah. that we all have, even if it, like, some addictions are are obvious that people always talk about, or, like, certain taboos or something, but, like, there's a lot of ways that we could, like, we're all addicted to our phones, and we don't yeah. even really think of it that way, but the ways that we don't fully engage in our lives or like the people around us at, without really realizing like that's kind of what the song's about yeah that was so well explained that's why we're a good team you know you who set them up the, and knock them down who did the video oh i don't well you say more because you hired them <laughs> sure. but like this amazing team like the amazing and they're going to be doing our next video for a song that we can't talk about yet but yeah the director is erica orofino and we had just gotten connected to her through a, a friend of a friend of a contact and saw her work and really loved it. And she, yeah, she's just so versatile. She's done a ton of music videos and short films. And um, so she, we had sent her the song and sort of told her what it was about, like what we were both just telling you about. And she came up with this kind of idea of mixing um, all of these. Yeah, so she, she had she had this idea of like, a few different scenes where in each one it would be us very like colorfully dressed in elaborate outfits and makeup and different color schemes doing some sort of day-to-day -day activity while being totally zoned out and then to make it even cooler she had this idea to have us in front of a green screen and so through the vfx she would have these gorgeous like psychedelic visuals in the background that would we'd be superimposed on. So then it sets us in these different scenes looking so cool and very colorful and bright against these psychedelic imagery, but are we're totally emotionless. And so that's how she kind of interpreted the themes of the song. Uh, and then to contrast those scenes, there were also like scenes of us performing as a band in a more kind of like gritty, dark yeah. uh, setting. So it kind of goes back and forth between those cool visuals with us rocking out as a band. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, other than, of course, the great performance that's coming up on Tuesday at the Lemon Sta uh, on the Lemon Stage at the Elmo Combo, any other shows happening throughout the summer of 2022? Yeah, we're starting to book a bunch of festivals and stuff. So we're playing Go North on St. Joseph Island. We're playing Revelry in Sarnia. We're going to Europe in May? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> no, you have, oh my God. Can we do this? We're going to Europe in May. We're going to Europe in May. Are we going to <laughs> Europe in May? So I don't know. Are we going to Europe in May? Cross <laughs> fingers, you're going to Europe in May. I hope. Okay. Yeah, let's so. do. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Let's we'll leave it, it at that. We'll leave it yeah. to that, guys. I gotta sure. say thank you so much for this interview. You two are amazing. I cannot wait to see the performance at the Elma Combo uh, with the Lemon Stage. I know you guys are gonna tear it up, and everything else you do, please. Keep that glitter energy going because we all need a little glitter. <laughs> yes, and we have a new song, just so you know, low key. It's oh my god, so sorry. Tuesday night is gonna be our single release because we have a new song coming out midnight Tuesday called Belong. So we're gonna be playing it for literally the first time for you guys. 
See that? <laughs> Bonus. Okay, Bonus. Don't shoot that off. I love it. Guys, thanks again for the interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I love so your vibe fun. too. Oh my God, can't wait to hug you.